I'll just make it the end of this little litter. Just I don't know how you want to do. Okay. What's up, guys? Double Cross King here on my crappy ass webcam. Uh, and here with the one and only at Dan TV Man. Angel Grove's in trouble, apparently. Okay. Uh, so I've been teasing on my Twitter uh, that me and Dan here, my wrestling buddy, uh, here at the University of New Hampshire, we're going to do a video on something called the Paul Heyman Revenge Tour. Yes, sir. It's, it, I'm not I'm not in love with the title, but it's what I called it when I thought of it originally. Yep. Uh, by the way, uh, WWE Creative, we hear you're looking for a new vice president. Yeah. Everyone, everyone works great in pairs. As, take this as our uh, audition piece. Yes. For uh, vice president of Creative. So. Uh, basically what uh, we started laying out is a year's worth of booking leading from uh, you know now so about you know three weeks before Wrestlemania 29 getting us all the way to Wrestlemania 30 with a fully booked uh, 11 match card one two three four but you know let's call it an 11 match card and, and, and also some ideas for post WrestleMania 30. Yeah, we 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 went a little crazy on this one. Um, the story includes one, two, three, four, five, six main story arcs that, nice, when done right, will fill the uh, 12 months between 29 and 30, mm -hmm. uh, involving no less than 12 major players and about 10 to 15 more bit parts. Uh, I mean, do we want to do we want to talk about what our end our, our, what our goal is or do we want to just dive right in with the setup? Let's start with WrestleMania 29. Okay. The setup. So, in, in the weeks coming, we have our we we all know that the Brock Lesnar Triple H match is going to happen. My idea for the stipulation was Lesnar demands that it is a street fight because it is a second match and it needs to be uh, more brutal than the first. Where the if Brock Lesnar wins, Triple H and the McMahons must secede creative control of the company to a person of Brock Lesnar's uh, choosing, and no checks or balances on however this person decides to run the company. You have. Hunter agree for some stupid reason. Uh, that's the pretty much the only thing that has to happen between now and then. All the other storylines they're doing can continue on as booked. Yeah, I mean, he I mean, maybe Triple H wants the street fight. Yeah, uh, but Brock puts up the step. Yeah, because I mean, Brock can be all like, "I beat you. I've got nothing left to prove. If we're gonna do this, I want something more." And we'll we'll get to my logic behind this. So. Um, at WrestleMania, we have three important story beats. First, uh, you have CM Punk defeats The Undertaker, who has never heard it from again. It, it'll make sense. It's controversial. This is, this, at least for me, this is coming from a guy who, if you asked me two years ago if Punk should, yeah. if uh, Taker should ever end a streak, I would say no, 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 yes. no, 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 the, no, the, no, no. The biggest Undertaker mark here, but yeah. Uh, Punk has to beat The Undertaker because you need Punk to have a certain uh, attitude that we'll get to. Second story beat is Brock Lesnar beats Triple H. Why not? Why not? Doesn't And he doesn't come right in and say what's happening, he just beats Triple H, he gets that douche smile he get, that he has from time to time and all the time walks up the ramp and the announcers speculate over exactly. Uh, I mean, you can even build in this direction where you think it's going to be Vicky Guerrero. Isn't he like technically Vicky Guerrero's client right now? They're, they're friendly. Yeah. For some but, um, reason. Then the third story be possi possibly even more controversial than Punk beating Undertaker in a wrestling match. Main event. John Cena hits The Rock with the second AA, third AA maybe. It, it's a WrestleMania main event. There's going to be multiple things. Yep. Lights go out. The Shield hits the ring. They beat the ever-loving hell out of John Cena. The Rock 
gets his corpse dragged over Cena. One, two, three. The Rock is beat John Cena. Down comes CM Punk. Down comes Brock Lesnar. They continue to put a beat down on both The Rock and Cena. And your final shot of WrestleMania is Paul Heyman at the top of the ramp. Fade to black. Money. Next night on Raw. Lesnar names Paul Heyman, head of WWE, whatever title they're calling it this month. And Paul explains that this is a dawn of a new era in wrestling. Because That's right, folks. It's an invasion angle, sort of. I, I wouldn't call it an invasion angle, though, because it's, well, it's, it's the, They're not. It's fake. Paul's point isn't that he wants to destroy the WWE. He wants to prove that he's better than Vince McMahon and better than Triple H. And that... He could, if he had had Vince McMahon money, he could have been the greatest thing that ever happened to wrestling. And it's about making the best product. He, so, and he did also makes a big point of denouncing that ECW was a failure because failure because he didn't have the caliber of the talent that he has now, including the Shield, Lesnar, Punk, and that will come up especially in the role of minor player. Yes, in, in a minor. Player. He announces that he will be keeping Triple H on as a wrestler because it's good for business, but the rest of the McMahon family is banned from television. As his reward for Brock Lesnar helping him get finally have his master plan come to fruition, he books Lesnar Rock 2 at Extreme Rules. Um, also sets up Punk to win the World Championship, which I had that idea, which was a little ridiculous, but I might pitch it anyways. About Punk not actually wanting to battle. Ah. Yes. So this sets up our major story arc. So we have uh, Triple H trying to regain his spot as owner of the WWE, realizing how badly he screwed up. We have what I what I call Crazy John Cena, which is something I've been waffling on for quite some time. Which which everyone wants. We have the unstoppable Brock Lesnar, WWE champion. World Heavyweight Champion for Life, CM Punk. Paul Heyman writes, all, writes a lot of wrongs. <laughs> and Daniel Bryan, Giant Killer. Um, so let's we'll skip the Triple H one. We'll go to the scene. Yep. Now. So, actually, no. Let's start with Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar, at Extreme Rules, decisively defeats The Rock. Next, because it's good for business. Because it's good for business. <laughs> the next night on Raw... Paul Heyman declares that Brock Lesnar should be a special attraction and that the common person should have to pay money to see the champion wrestle. Brock Lesnar will only appear on pay-per-view from henceforth. Appear. Yeah. He won't, he's never going to show up on Raw. He's only going to appear on pay-per-view to defend his title. That simple. Um, then you can have... I mean, he's going to give him real challengers, but the point is that you're making him a special attraction. Yeah. Then we go, then we'll jump back to uh, Crazy John Cena. So John Cena, who's been talking up how he needs to beat The Rock, loses it over the fact that he never beat The Rock. Uh, the original idea, at least I thought it was, was that it's actually not uh, the shield beating of both men and putting The Rock over John Cena, but to just have a no contest. Either or, which which would honestly be more controversial than just a yeah. heel beat down and Rock gets pulled over. Yeah, to but just I mean, to just have no winner at the end. Yeah, of WrestleMania. A, a, a no winner at the end of WrestleMania is a very bold risk. It would, if you want to make Paul Heyman, I guess it could help in making Paul Heyman more of a heel. Yeah, because, because you, if you don't happen. beat like if you beat Cena, that does make him slightly a face. Because when you beat Cena, yep. you're over. Right. <laughs> But anyways, so Cena goes crazy and immediately goes to war with the Shield. And Cena doesn't want help from anybody. This is John Cena's one-man vendetta against the Shield. And you can do several months of him trying to beat them one-on-three and failing every time because all he's doing is raging. You know, he's not trying to wrestle. He's not trying to 
like actually defeat them and rest. He just wants to hurt them. But it doesn't work because the shield works so well as a cohesive unit. This is not Triple H versus Legacy where it takes Legacy 15 minutes to beat Triple H. No. Cena gets beaten 4 minutes or less. Yeah. Or Cena comes out, then the, the next time Cena comes out and he's got the steel pipe and he's trying to beat them down. Still fails, but gets better. And then he realizes he has to isolate them. We do one-on-ones versus Reigns and Rollins, you build up to one-on-one -on -one versus Ambrose at SummerSlam, where Ambrose wants nothing to do with Cena until the very last minute. If Ambrose is gonna get a lot of work going forward as a singles, yeah. so we do wanna make it a little special when him and Cena face off. In, I mean, and I think by the time you get to SummerSlam, you have to have Cena storyline injure both Reigns and Rollins so that they, they can't interfere in the yeah. match. Uh, they come back immediately after, because we need them for Survivor Series, but you do build up to Cena beating Ambrose at SummerSlam. Yep. Uh, while we're in the summertime, do we want to do at least the first half of the uh, Punk stuff? All right, we can talk about it. So, so you see on Punk, who has defeated The Undertaker, and comes out and declares, you know, I've done it all. You know, he's God. He is, yeah, he, he's, he's God now. Yeah, as he said, I'm God, he is God. And he believes he should be World Heavyweight Champion for life. And the thing that I came up with the other day, which kind of thought was hilarious in a way of having Heyman mock Triple H is you somehow have Heyman justify stripping the World Heavyweight Championship off of whoever has it after WrestleMania and awarding it to Punk in the same way Eric Bischoff originally awarded the World Heavyweight Championship to Triple H and that Punk is now declared World Heavyweight Champion for life. Suck it. <laughs> Yes. He has to say suck it. Yeah. We need, to, we need to be subtle and yet over the top at the same time yeah. in saying we are shooting on Triple H. Yes. Um, so he is just taught it's all about how great St. Punk is. And it's like while you're going to have, and again, they're going to talk about how the World Heavyweight Championship should be a special attraction. So Punk's not going to defend that belt because he said, I'm World Heavyweight Champion for life. He's going to come out with the belt every week and just be all, it just be the cocky, arrogant asshole. About, about it. Um, leading up to around SummerSlam, uh, can we get the SummerSlam? Or does it have to happen? I no, it would, happen, it would happen in July. In July, um, you have CM Punk eventually declare that he will defend the title when he gets uh, some opponent, maybe a... Maybe Del Rio, Del Rio, Del Rio Swagger. Yeah, I, I think it has to be Del Rio. You can, yeah. make, you can make it to July without having that rematch. You get the, um, but the Raw before that match, you have one Dolph Ziggler declare, at the end of the CM Punk Del Rio match, I'm cashing in the money in the bank contract. Are you happy, Twitter? <laughs> Are you happy? <laughs> Which leads to Punk having a great match with... Del Rio, but, beca and, but because, you know, Lesnar will be occupied with something else we'll talk about, and The Shield is out of commission, CM Punk has to actually wrestle Del Rio, uh, has a hard time beating him, beats him, but then out comes Dolph Ziggler, and Ziggler beats Punk for the title at the July paper mm -hmm. which sets off Punk on a uh, crazier tangent. You got some sound check going on. All right. It sounds sexy. <laughs> um, right. So I guess we can. So we, so we just got to SummerSlam. So we a, well, we didn't even mention what we have Triple H doing. So uh, Triple H after goes into a little. Mm, oh my God! I'm a miserable failure that screwed up my first shot at running this company. Uh, and you have him trying to, you know, get his revenge on Paul Heyman. So I think the first thing you have to do is he tries to turn to his old friends. So he tries to. Uh, I, I thought it would be hilarious if he recruits uh, Gunn and Road Dog in a very reminiscent version of Pat Patterson and Briscoe <laughs> being his like corporate guys, and we're going to come in and save the WWE. And that would be hilarious. Yeah. Because it's Billy Gunn <laughs> and the Road Dog being Pat Patterson and Briscoe circa the night, mid 90s, late 90s, late 90s. Early 2000s, early 2000s late 90s. Yeah. The Stooges. Um, so that plan fails. So then I think Hunter would then turn to Sean. He goes, to, gets HBK, and he's like, "You gotta come back. I, I, I'm, I'm so lost without you." Cause they're, you know, they got that guy love thing going on. And I think HBK has to come out and say, "You know, you dug your own grave. I can't do anything." 
I can't help you. Taker can't help you. Taker's gone. This is this is all on you. This this is the end of the era. Yeah. You 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 wanted to end the era. So that's that. So then I th so then basically HBK needs the point of the HBK thing really needs to be. Do you you ha look at all the talent you have? Yeah. Stop burying your guys. Stop thinking that I'm the best thing there is right now. Yeah. Like this this isn't 1996 anymore. Yeah, I'm not the guy. There's a guy somewhere for you. Go find him. So then I think, so then I think he's still hesitant about looking for someone new. So he turns to his former protege, the one Randy Orton. Who I think Orton would be very hesitant about trusting Hunter, giving up, you know, that <laughs> Hunter destroyed his uh, bay window one time. Uh, yeah, you know, attempted murder yeah, uh, uh, ten, yeah. tends to put a rift between yeah. people. Three month rule. <laughs> um, so he, he, turn, he turns to, to turns to Orton and eventually does recruit Orton to his cause and you set up Lesnar Orton at SummerSlam. Lesnar still gets the victory though. And Hunter is once again foiled. Um, and again, it's all about him trying to figure out it's like if I gotta save this company, I have to find someone that's gonna beat Brock Lesnar or something. I couldn't do something, John Cena. Uh, barely couldn't do. I mean, we could even. We, I think at one point we were trying to figure out where we stick in the senior was in the match. Uh, I think probably uh, do a no finish at either this is a September or early October pay per view. Oh, Hell in a Cell. And then Hell in a Cell have Brock. Yeah. Uh, yeah have them do a no contest or a double DQ. Yeah. Do Hell in a Cell. Brock wins. Yeah. That'd uh, be a fun match. Yeah, that'd be a fun match. C Cena and Lesnar in, in, a, in a cell would be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Uh, this whole time, then, we have uh, Paul Heyman trying to fix things that Vince got wrong, <laughs> um, including he brings back some talent that Vince let get away. Um, my rules when I come to fantasy booking is uh, you can't uninjure people, you can't unkill people, um, and you can't bring in talent that is ironclad contracts otherwhere. So I figured the type of people he could bring in is like a Colt Cabana, the work Shelton Benjamin, Charlie Haas. Um, guys, that makes sense. You know, he brings in Colt because he's Punk's friend. He brings in the world's greatest tag team because they were former Paul Heyman guys. He brings team in, angle. Yeah, he brings in um, Joey Mercury and John Morrison because Joey Mercury's Punk's friend. He liked John. I mean, you can just pretend he liked John Morrison. Um, we had a funny bit where he demotes Miz to only being able to work uh, Wednesday night main event because it's a shoot, brother. <laughs> he doesn't like Miz. Uh, he pushes. Zack Ryder because uh, Ryder remember he reminds him of Stone Cold getting held down in WCW. Um, and by by the way, we had booked this with the original idea that we could get one guy who's hard to get, Samoa Joe. We wanted to do to get to give away the angle that we originally had planned. We were going to build the Samoa Joe, Joe Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. WrestleMania. But, uh, but we wanted we decided to play by a little bit safer rules yeah. in this case. Um, then I think uh, Paul since I think Paul has a way to apologize to the fans because you know Paul Hammond's all about being honest with fans. So when he goes, you know, your world heavyweight title and your WWE championship aren't going to be defended that much. I think to make it up to them, Paul would declare that every Raw and every SmackDown you will either have a United States title, an Intercontinental title, or a tag team title match. <laughs> Builds up your new mid card divisions. Builds up your tag team division. Wonderful. But uh, Dan, what about the Divas title? Oh, Paul, Paul Heyman walks out in the middle of a Divas match, picks up the belt, and says, "No more of this." Throws it in a dumpster and is like, and, and we're, we're, "We're gonna work. We're coming back to this." But for now, we're no, we're done. And uh, and and maybe on maybe on a SmackDown a couple months down the road, have Trish Stratus bring back the women's title. And they can do that on SmackDown away from all the other stuff. Um, so we're really building up to Survivor Series. Um, and I think at the beginning, you start with that Paul Heyman, and like, you know, the Smarks and the Marks can get behind. Uh, but then you got to have him, like, losing it and getting so power hungry. And some of our uh, small bits that we came up with for uh, just to show how much Paul's lost it. Um, when he's talking, well, you know, he's, when he's bringing in all these guys from the past, I think you need to have a bit where you know he's crapping all over ECW for a while, and you have like Tommy Dreamer come out and go like, "Hey, Paul, why haven't I got a call?" And Paul's like, "Oh, you didn't get a call because 
you were everything that was wrong with the old Paul Heyman. Mm -hmm. And if, it, if I had real talent in 1996 and going up to the, late to the early 2000s, I'd still be in business. And then you have The Shield or somebody. I mean, I did. You, you, you talk about just incredible. Yes. That was, it's it's uh, because of you that I had to put my title on just incredible. You, you say it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brother. Uh, um, um, and, then, and then we get my favorite part of this entire angle. Yeah. Uh, we get Lance Storm. Uh, <laughs> we, we were, for, for those who don't know, I troll Dan every day. She puts Lance Storm in all of her ankles. My original plan was that Lance Storm beats Brock Lesnar or beats CM Punk at Mania. Yeah, no. uh, but I would say we do a we do a Lance Storm one off, have him job to Ambrose. Yeah, no, something like that. So like because we needed an ECW guy that could still go and that people would be fine seeing and what wasn't in TNA. And at the end of the day, I think we came down to Lance Storm and Rhino. If we could get Rhino for a show, yeah, and again, and then we talk about Rhino. We say, "I was I was a dumb guy in the early two thousands. I had Rob Van Dam, and I did nothing, and I put both belts on you. Yeah, uh, I saved your. All I did was save your save your job in the WWF, and, and you get, while I lost my company. And you get and you get Lance Storm because we jumped the barricade with Dreamer when ECW came in for the invasion. Lance Storm." I mean, I mean, you can't get anyone else. The Dudleys are in TNA. Taz is dead. Raven's <laughs> dead. Uh, Perry Saturn's dead. No, Perry Saturn wasn't part of that. I love Raven, but to put him in the shape he's in on WWE television, that's that's a little embarrassing. We're already taking a dump on Just Incredible, so we can't have Just Incredible with this. So it has to be Rhino, Lance Storm, and Tommy Dreamer. Mm -hmm. um, and then at one point, we even had where you have Funk, uh, Terry Funk come in and talk about how Heyman's lost his way. Yep. And you get Terry Funk get the shit knocked out of him um, by Heyman's lackeys. I think, it, and we also somehow wanted Big Show to once again become a Paul Heyman lackey because they've done that so many That's times. part of a sub angle which we'll get to. Right. Our, uh, yeah. So you're building up. Uh, so you have Heyman. No, you have Hunter. Trying to recruit new guys. Um, I think the guys we'd like Hunter to turn to are Kofi Kingston, uh, Del Rio, Sheamus, Ryback. Um, yes, yes, we're using Ryback. We you have to use Ryback. Especially, as I'm getting over the fact that he's not very good um, and that he ha he has a place. Yeah. Whether I like it or not. So you you have the SummerSlam match where let uh, at SummerSlam Cena beats Ambrose, Punk beats. Punk gets the belt back from Ziggler, and uh, Lesnar beats Orton. Yeah. So you, build, so you have Triple H then start playing really dirty and really goading Heyman into a match at Survivor Series, which will be a five-on-five -five match, uh, where we have Lesnar, Punk, The Shield, versus... <laughs> You build it up where it first looks like it's going to be just Cena, Orton, Ryback, and Ziggler. And the last minute Triple H bows out and says, this needs to I be know, maybe, 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 maybe Ryback and Kofi, yeah. and we'll have... Uh, Triple H, we, uh, the, his team and everyone thinks that Triple H is the fifth man. Yeah. Triple H bows out. Because part of this, he, he needs to remember what Sean said yeah. and be like, this isn't about me anymore. I can't be so personal. Because one, I couldn't get it done on my own. And two, like, I need to trust my company. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, that, and you can bring in uh, an Ed Ziegler as a somewhat reluctant fifth member. Yep. Yep, definitely. But, you know, he's hungry to get his hands on Punk Punched by any means. So... Then at the uh, Survivor Series match, uh, Cena and Lesnar get double DQ, double countered out. Cena takes one for the team. Uh, then we had Orton takes out Rollins, Ambrose and Reigns double team Orton. Ryback takes out Reigns. Ambrose uh, rolls up Ryback. Ambrose takes out Kofi. Ziggler gets the two on one comeback and pins Punk in the middle of the ring. Hunter regains control of the uh, company. Oh god, we totally skipped over bringing in Richie Steamboat. Uh, we haven't figured out exactly when's the most organic time. <laughs> At some point you have to uh, debut Richie Steamboat. 
because Richie Steamboat's um, going to be a big, a big thing. He may or may not be a future World Heavyweight Champion. Yes, we're going to get to that. Um, <laughs> so Paul Heyman, next night, Heyman is in control. Heyman, or, I mean, Hunter's in control. He fires Heyman. Heyman's never uh, heard from again. So all the Paul Heyman guys are freaking out. But, you know, Punk and uh, Le Lesnar still have their belts, so like, they can't get fired. And they talk about it's like, well, you know, we're still only defending at the pay per view, and that's fine. So you build up to uh, Hunter thinks Ryback's going to be the guy that can beat Lesnar because he's like, see, like originally, all right, John, it's your turn. You got to get your win. You, you should do. You, I mean, you can do this. And John Cena would be all like, I, I failed. It's, it's Ryback's time. But they were, looked like they were going to do building up to the Rumble, and he was supposed to pass the torch to Ryback. No, nope, no, nope, but that's what we're doing now. Cena goes, it's your turn. Skip. <laughs> go, so meta. Go beat, go beat Brock. Which he doesn't. Let, they'll, they do a good 15 minute uh, strongman brawl. Strongman brawl that ends in Lesnar barely, beat, barely beating. Uh, just just, just imagine, Ryback goes for his third or fourth meet with clothesline. Lesnar ducks, pick him up. Uh, uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, you do the Punk Ziggler blow off at the Rumble. Punk retains. Yep. Um, it's I quit match, submission match, something. I don't know. And before we talk about this last point, let's talk about how we would build to that point. So, we have Punk doing his thing because Punk is more pre 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 prevalent yep. on television. Uh, you have Punk and Heyman, and you get him exchanging promos with the likes of maybe Ric Flair. Yeah. Talking about how he's better than Flair. Talking about he's, he's basically kind of ripping off Shane Douglas, except Punk can back it up. Yep. Which would then Ric Flair would lead to the on-screen return of Ricky Steamboat, yeah. Ricky the Dragon. We yes, he's not in great shape after the stroke, which entirely sucks because if we could have gotten not a match, but if we could have gotten a chop exchange yeah. or, or an arm drag exchange on television, but still you. The, the point is, is Punk is talking about how he's better than anyone that has ever held this belt before, and that pisses off Flair. I mean, I know you can't get really physical with Flair either, but still, he pisses off Flair, he, he knocks Flair off. You have, you get whoever the hell you can drag out of storage for this angle that was at one time. Ron, Ron Garvin. At one, yeah, at uh, one point, World Heavyweight Champion. I mean, you can bring out Batista. You can bring out... Ron like, Simmons. Ron he Simmons. He had the big gold belt. You can bring out... Um, and it doesn't just have to be that. It can be anyone. Diamond Dallas Page. You can finally get your, your stone, like even in the ring with Stone Cold, and he's like, I'm better than you ever were, Stone Cold. But like all these guys realize, you know, they can't do it. And um, where we make it really personal is with Ricky Steve. Yeah. So it, it, like, you know, Punk, I don't think gets too physical with any of these guys, but no. for some reason he gets pissed off at Steamboat. And earlier we will have debuted because I want to make Paul Heyman's going to have a very big initiative about bringing in new and young talent. And Rick, Rick, Richie Steamboat is going to debut and be a, you know the young blue chipper, the you know the thing everyone hates, the Rocky Maya he is. Yeah. And hopefully they don't chant "Die Richie Die." But anyway, so you know, um, and we the the for some reason Steamboat's going to be the one that puts Punk over the line, and Punk attacks Steamboat. Not just the taxi though. <laughs> I, why I didn't think of this until just now, well, he just thought of it just now. Why I didn't think of this before blows my mind. Dan, you, what's the, what's the angle to set up a steamboat match? You, you do the ring bell spot. You do the ring bell. You, Punk kicks him in the head and does the ring bell spot. Ring bell spot. Richie runs out and huddles over dead daddy. And, but, but, when, you know, Richie wants a piece of Punk, and either, I mean, I, I think it couldn't be Ricky, though, because you have Ricky incapacity. But someone tells Richie, wait, you're not ready for this. You can't run into the fire. That might be Flair. Yeah. That, that might be where, because we're, we're, we're using Funk or something else. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, we already talked about that, but we'll come back to that. We, we, use, <laughs> Rick, we use Ricky as the, as the setup. Yeah. We think Ricky's going to be... The guy that's Richie's crazy. manager full time, but he can't because we do the angle. Yeah, so he can, he can have Flair. It doesn't, it doesn't even have to be Flair. It has to be For probably yeah. Flair. Yeah. That's the most personal. Yeah, like mm -hmm. it, the more reality we can put into this, the better. Which builds up to Richie Steamboat winning the Royal Rumble, proving that he is ready for this. 
If Alberto Del Rio can win the Rumble five months after debuting, I think Richie Steamboat, uh, assuming that he doesn't suck on television, and we're going to assume that he's decent, at least. Yeah. Uh, Building up to Punk Richie as one of your sub-main events at WrestleMania. Yep. So there's one match. <laughs> one of our 11 matches. Um, we are also building up to... So during all of this, we have an angle that I like to refer to as Daniel Bryan, Giant Killer. At this WrestleMania, you need Daniel Bryan to beat Kane. And then you spend the next 10 months having Daniel Bryan beating the likes of Mark Henry, Brodus Clay, Tensai, both of who I turn heel, because I'm an asshole. <laughs> um, the great Kali, uh, Ezekiel Jackson. Ezekiel Jackson. Whatever's Biggie. left of, Ray, of uh, Mason Ryan. Yeah, uh, just whoever you can bring in for big guys. And you need, in mo- each match, in more and more impressive fashion, which leads up to um, Elimination Chamber. Oh, okay, before, before that. that? Yeah, okay, well, before that, you have to have where uh, it looks like Brian, uh, Daniel Bryan's going to be one of uh, Triple H's guys, so Heyman 6, big show on it. If a former Paul Heyman guy who's yeah. who's on more of a hired mercenary yeah. basis, he's not he's not he's definitely not one of those. So four. at Survivor Series, I think yeah we're gonna do this. Let's do it at Survivor Series. Okay. So Survivor Series, you have Big Show versus Daniel Bryan that ends in referee stoppage. Before that, we're gonna do maybe a double count out. Yeah. But we are going to do a last maybe not even last man standing. Just a, just a, any match. I think it, and and you have. Daniel Bryan knock the Big Show out with MMA elbows. Referee stoppage. And then people will begin to fear just how violent Daniel Bryan can be. At one point we're like, well then he can transform into Bryan Danielson, but not everyone might get that. Yeah. But still. Which leads to our elimination chamber, which the winner will get to face Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. You have uh, Brian, Brian. But before we even start, before people really start trying to jump into the fold, yeah. we we established that no one wants to wrestle us. <laughs> I mean, at this point he, he, he took the muscle head ride back and threw him around like a rag. At this point, he will have you will have done Lesnar over Triple H, Lesnar over Orton, Lesnar over Cena, Lesnar over The Rock, and Lesnar over Orton, and in impressive fashion. Oh yeah, to the point where it's like clean, clean, yeah. clean, clean, clean. It's like who's going to want to wrestle Brock Lesnar? And the first guy that steps up is Daniel Bryan. We're t- we're tele we're telegraphing. Yeah, he's like, he's like, I'll do it. I just dismantled the Big Show. I can beat him. I want to be the first guy in the elimination chamber. And then you have then you have guys follow suit. And it's like, you know, little Brian Danielson is going to be in the elimination chamber. I'm going to be. So then you have to come Cena. You have him ride back. Uh, Ziggler. I don't think I wrote it down. I don't think I wrote it down. I don't think I wrote it down. Ziggler. Uh, yeah, Ambrose. We need to add Ambrose in there because we broke up the shield after Survivor Series. Uh, at well. the December pay per view, yeah. full circle, one whole year, yeah. uh, the shield wrestles their final match trios match. match. Yeah. They lose. Ambrose gets frustrated, does his own thing. Yeah, you uh, more so though making Rollins and Reigns faces, keeping Ambrose. Here. Yeah, uh, but anyway, so you get your elimination chamber, and uh, Brian Danielson or Daniel Bryan, whatever the hell, comes out on top, setting him up. He taps out John Cena at the end. Yeah, he ta- he, he submits Cena. Beautiful. Um, that's that's not the last time they're going to interact, at least in my head. Um, so then, so there's your two. Re- so you got two WrestleMania matches. There you got Lesnar, Brian Danielson. You've got CM Punk, Richie Steamboat. We said, give me uh, the Rock comes back around Rumble time and says, John, and our last match didn't end clean. I want to give you Rock Cena three in the same fashion that you had Stone Cold Rock three at WrestleMania 19. And Cena will finally get his win. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's much lower on the card. Yeah, quick <laughs> Uh we, we booked uh, Ziggler, Big E, Rollins, and Reigns for the tag belts. 
you know, we, 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 hit, we did a lot with Ziggler, we can't just forget about him. Yep. And it would be fun, uh, Rollins and Reigns are probably tag champs by this point. Yep. And uh, we could put Ziggler over, assuming that he still is doing the Big E thing. Um, he, can, he can find someone to work with. And then I kind of want just like this dastardly, psychotic, in a different sense than we did with Cena, Ambrose, uh, who gets stood up to by one Kofi Kingston, who at this point we will have established as a more main event player, building up to him. Ambrose Kingston at Mania, and you put Kingston over. Uh, Ryback takes on the big show. Mm-hmm. And then nine minute, you know, get, it, it's a Goldberg match. Yes. <laughs> you, you, hit the, you hit the big spots. Um, it's not a 20 minute Goldberg match with Triple H, it's a nine minute Goldberg match like WCW you did correctly. Uh, Del Rio versus Barrett, United States title versus Intercontinental title. Um, we turned Orton on Sheamus at the Rumble. Because everyone likes to heal Randy Orton. And they were supposed to... No, the kids don't. No, screw it. <laughs> um, we, uh, we, we really enjoyed the thought of a Ryder versus Colt Cabana comedy match. And do that shit at Mania. Yeah, at Mania. Uh, with, with, all the, with the 11 matches we have, to have one of them be a comedy, like a full-on comedy match that goes 10, 12 minutes... And I think I think people can. Do who that. else could you do it with? Oh no! I mean, what do you mean? You throw in Morella there, but I shouldn't. I mean, could somehow get Stanky the Morella off Raw too, and have him come <laughs> back as his Russian assassin gimmick. That's the quiet. Yeah, it, 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 there there were way too many super shoot moments that I wanted. <laughs> um, we built up a uh, four way tag team match just to show that we have a tag team vision. So for the number one contenders, you had the uh, world's greatest tag team versus the prime time players versus. Epico and Primo versus Gabriel, Justin Gabriel and Evan Bourne. And then we have a year later than originally had planned, you have Mysterio passing the torch to Sakara. Which, let's be honest, by the time WrestleMania 30 comes around, Rey Mysterio is pretty much done. Yeah. So have him face Sakara, have Sakara win, and try to salvage uh, the Sakara experiment. I mean, and that's, that's the angle in a nutshell. Um, I mean, I think we, we missed a couple. We skipped a bunch of story beats because the original conversation is about four hours long. Yes, uh, we discussed things like a Kevin Nash television appearance. <laughs> or Nash uh, is banned from Monday Night Raw because Heyman hates him. <laughs> just like, nope. Because I just wanted so many of these moments that were like, it's like, oh, I see what they're doing here. And then they stop and just go, no, that is not happening anymore. They, they set up all of these wrestling cliches. I, yes, and just, you, yeah. And to your face go, nope, this is not a cliche angle. So you can, Kevin Nash doesn't get to run out of the audience. And, and, and assuming, assuming that once we do Triple H back in charge of the company, yeah. that Triple H does learn a few things. Yeah. Like he's not as much of a, you know, he's not yeah. as, as strict as Paul Heyman was about everything, but he is, he does try to he, break he, cliche. He, and he does try to keep up the, the champion only defense on pay-per-view. We have a secondary title match at every television taping. Um, I think you still keep Gun and Dog as his stooges. That he, that would just be fun. But he doesn't. But you know, like you could have like Waltman wants front row tickets and he doesn't give them to him. <laughs> or he's like, hey Hunter, how about I work work the undercard tonight? It's like, no, no, Sean, you're 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 old. No one wants to see that. Not to be a dick, but <laughs> like, <laughs> dick, but it, it, like we're not trying to make anyone a heel. Like in that yeah. case, no one's trying to be a heel. Yeah. We're te- it, it's basically an angle that would illustrate to the audience, like Triple Triple H is trying to change. Yeah, we're trying to move on to a new era of wrestling. Yes. The end not, result it's is not the end of SummerSlam 2011 where Kevin Nash is standing tall over yeah. CM Punk. Because um, in my mind, the reason why we're in such a rut in wrestling right now is if you think about it the last time you had the two biggest uh eras of wrestling the hulk hogan era and the stone Cold steve austin era the thing that made them work was the stars of yesteryear were gone think about it stone cold beat well didn't like in wins and losses now he didn't beat bret hart but in reality he beat bret hart and Shawn michaels back-to-back wrestling teams, and then they were gone and that's what got stone cold over Hulk Hogan, uh, when Hulk Hogan pinned the Iron Sheik, Bob Backlund and all the other faces of yesteryear were gone. No Bruno, 
Yeah. Like, okay. had, had Bruno somehow been an active part of the roster in 1984? Hulk he doesn't take, a, take off. That's a, that's a huge notch off Hulk Hogan's heat. So what, you really, so what we really need to do is at the end of the day, I mean, yeah, sure, we could still have Cena and Orton on the roster, but they cannot be the main focus. They need to be in themselves special attractions. Anyone who has been a main eventer for multiple years is essentially a part-time worker, at least yeah. for the next year or two. They're basically a part-time worker because we cannot have Cena and Orton as television regulars yeah. at the same time as we're trying to we're trying to do something with Richie Steamboat. We're trying to do the second generation thing right with Steamboat. Yeah. We're trying to convince the audience that Daniel Bryan is a convincing WWE champion who beats Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. Because at the end of this angle, your biggest names in wrestling are Daniel Bryan, Richie Steamboat, Dean Ambrose, Seth Rollins. Roman Reigns, Dolph Ziggler, Kofi Kingston, Alberto Del Rio. CM Punk to an extent. CM Punk, but I don't I see I think Punk wants to retire soon, sooner rather than later. And Wade Barrett I I I I'd just make him the manager, but <laughs> Wade Barrett, I'd gladly pay Punk if he just keeps talking. Yeah. Wade Barrett and Sheamus, and then you still and then you have a strong undercard. This is the other thing that I think we need is you need like when you have a storyline this big is you give everybody all, I mean, you've got what, 11 hours of television a week? Too many hours. Right, okay, but still, you need to give every person who shows up on your television show something to do in relevance to this storyline. And that's what makes it compelling, and that's what makes it interesting. You guys may, alright. Me and Dan are theater buddies. <laughs> uh, we, we, we became friends and started talking. I believe I believe one of the first wrestling uh, discussions we ever had was you going, answer, uh, best match you've ever seen. Yeah. And I instinctually answer Mitsuharu Masawa and Kenta Kobashi versus Kawada and Tawe from June of 95. <laughs> to where he's like, this kid might be a bigger wrestling nerd than I am. But and I'm like, wow, someone who might be almost as big of a wrestling nerd as I am in real life and not just on Twitter. Um, and so Jake focuses, all, has been focusing a lot more on like the indie aspect of the wrestling. I, I, I treat professional wrestling like it's theater. Because to me it is. And I came at this angle um, trying to run like, well, what tells, sitting in directing class, like, what's a compelling story? What makes a story good? And I'm like, you need every character needs to do something, needs motivation, and you need an end game. That's the biggest problem. Is like so many people because like we were building up to so many things, and it's like, but then what do you do? Because you have to, have, you got your next episode. So it's like when we were like originally at one point, I'm like, all right, so right back goes over to Lesnar. It's like, and then what? Okay, that, CM Punk. That was that was me being a dick, as I am but, to Dan but, all the time as a. Director. But like when I was like, CM Punk beats Undertaker, and then what? No, that that was that was his comeback to me. Yeah, and, and and it's always about the end. Then one, you don't necessarily. I mean, you don't necessarily need to you know put ten years down the road. But I think just knowing what your end game is, and then that next step is the, the key to any successful angle. Um, and I hope we get to do this again and again because I mean, clearly they're not going to do our big storyline because this is a big scary storyline that involves a lot of risk taking, and it and at any time you get cold feet. Um, I mean, there's a lot of room for improvision here, and a lot of there's, room for there's a, And there's honestly, there's a lot of stuff that can be cut that yeah. won't hurt the angle as a whole. Yeah. But we didn't throw anything in here that we that we thought was anything that we threw in there. We thought was because it made the angle that much richer. Yeah. Oh, by the way, uh, we do a brief angle where Ryback goes trains with Terry, Terry Funk, Funk and basically becomes a bar fighter. To, to and he call and he calls out the biggest dog in the yard, which is what sets up Brock Lesnar. And yeah. What sets what, up what he's, uh, we're trying to trying to get to the. We're trying to add an extra dimension to Ryback yeah. because he's two dimensional as fuck. Yeah, and we wanted to also have we like. Brock Lesnar is the ultimate Paul Heyman guy, so he has to go train with former Paul Heyman guys. The, the guy who helped Paul Heyman succeed. Right, to understand how you beat the ultimate Paul Heyman guy. Um, the toughest motherfucker on the planet. Yeah. Uh, we, we had a ton of yeah. other fun small moments. I mean, we, do, see, we talked about Tommy Dreamer, we talked about Lance Michael. Storm. 
plant oh, score. I mean, we even had one point where uh, Triple H tries to get Batista to come back, and I think he'd be just hilarious, like, you know, <laughs> knocking on Batista's door. He wears a, Batista comes out in his pink polo. Yeah, like, what, are you, what are you really talking about, Hunter? I, I'm done. I don't want none of this shit. And he slaps the door in his face. <laughs> He's like, God, does your new talent, you know, that's when, that's when Batista can be the honest one. Yeah. Batista but basically he, speaks for the honesty and says, God, how much does your company suck that you need me back? Yeah, or especially how skinny have him say have the, have Batista say that on national television. Yeah, or just how like he's he's, he's not as jacked as he was. Something like Hunter sees. What the hell happened? I don't know. I've I've seen I've seen uh, House of the Rising. I've seen clips uh, from House of the Rising. Again. All right, last time I saw him. <laughs> just the one little bit I saw, and uh, Amy Smart asking the question, and she or she just like. That was a whole of an act you put out there. And uh, Batista said, what makes you think I'm acting? I'm like, that's a really good question, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> What's supposed to make us think that you're acting right now? Um, so, I mean, and th th that was a real Spark Notes version of our angle. We're always open <laughs> yeah, to a 45 minute long Spark Notes. Uh, and we're always open to suggestions. I mean, find that thing that doesn't work, find the thing that pisses you off. But again, always remember the point of any good angle is to get over new talent and to keep the audience engaged. And it's okay if it's predictable as long as predictable is compelling. Yep. That's 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 my rule. Um, and again, we've got some more ideas for things, and uh, if you enjoy this, please let us know. Yeah. Uh, you know, let me know if it's a success on my channel. I'll let him know. Yeah. I mean, I'll get him to to do this again because we. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a joke. We were supposed to we were supposed to shoot this last night, but we ended up having a discussion to where two more wrestling related topics got brought up. To where honestly, each of them deserves probably their own video, especially the which one? The, the what ifs? Or the the oh right, my my. If someone gave me an unlimited pile of money, how I'd uh, save the sport of professional wrestling? The sport. The sport. Professional wrestling. Yes, the sport of professional wrestling. It was, it's something that I've been thinking about for years, and but no one had ever given me a giant pile of money to do this, now would they? I mean, if like you, if your directing thing really takes off, like yeah, yeah, maybe like maybe one day when I win my Academy Award, I'll retire from Hollywood. Your Academy Award, your Tony, your yeah. Emmy, your, I'll, your Grammy. Yeah, and I'll give up on Hollywood and I'll just come run my wrestling global empire. Hopefully Michael Bay doesn't do that. I think that's... <laughs> but then we'd have more explosions. Lance Storm explodes. Every match and every feud ends in an Inferno match in the Michael Bay Wrestling Federation. <laughs> okay, we need to end yeah, this part. Yeah, all right. So, thanks for watching. Dan, yeah, thank okay. you for being my one wrestling friend in the whole wide world. I wouldn't have it any other way, Jacob. Are we about to make out on camera?